Beer pong is a game where you throw a ping pong ball into a cup and you try to beat your opponents. I could make as much money as I'd make in a month in, in one, from one game of beer pong. It's, it's a large cash prize for playing something as simple as beer pong. And it goes all the way across the country from you know, California up to Washington, all the way down to New York and Florida. The people, the friends, the ass messages, and the jobs. Let's be honest, we're a bunch of low life degenerates out here playing this game, but it's one of the easiest games out there. The great thing about beer pong is that anybody can come out and be good at it. Anybody can come out, can come out and be somebody. Beer pong has been an extremely important part of my life for the past five years, I'd say, since 2007. Well, I guess that would be coming up on six years uh, when I started playing in Vegas. I would say I'm extremely competitive. I can't stand uh, losing as much. You know, I know it's part of the game. There's players that are going to play a good one game against you and you're going to get beat. Uh, but when you uh, can't contend as well as I would like, that part um, starts to become not, not as fun anymore, and when the game's not fun, I don't want to play it. I think not playing the game competitively is not as fun for me. Like anything I play, whether it be golf, bowling, pool, I want to win. You know, Yeah, it's fun to go get drunk with your friends and have a good time, but if at the end of the day, if I'm not putting the ball in the cup, I'm not really having that good of a time. I know there's house rules ways to play and you know beer and cups and fun roles you can play, but I still want to win. So at a moment in the game when we're starting to get behind or whatever, the fun goes out and it's serious mode for me. And it's just something I can't turn off. Gabriel Montoya, little SETI man. Um, the, he's just too funny. Like he gets the he gets in his own head of the game because he because he takes it so seriously. He's a great shooter. And I remember when I first started playing, he was constantly, constantly like getting on my nerve. Like I was like, oh, I just want to beat this guy. I can't, like I can't stand this little guy like making all these cups. He's just a little short guy, and, and he would beat me every time. Like, and then I remember the first time I beat him, it, it was great. <laughs> it just made my day, and I was so happy. And then recently, game. Uh, asked me to run the company with him, so we, I've been running the company with him for about a year now, almost. Eden Hemphill is the co-runner of Southwest Beer Pong now with me. He's one of the tallest players in beer pong at six foot eight. Pretty much uh, drops the ball in the cup. He's extremely good. Plays well with a really good player. Plays well with a really bad player. Lower level players, he allows them to shoot three balls, you know. He's real sharing during the game, wants to have fun, wants to involve everybody that he's with. Um, he's good for Southwest Beer Pong and getting new players and being excited about it. He gets pretty loud a lot of the times. He's memorable in that aspect. He gets, he gets, you know, if you're playing in a bar, usually the, that's what gets people to come over. Uh, Corey and him sit down on the floor and put their hands out. Constantly yelling, you know, F your mother, F this, F, F anything. And sometimes it works. Whether I'd like to admit it or not, it can get to me. Getting all crazy and throwing cups everywhere. and That's, that's Eden pretty much. He's an incredibly good shooter. Fucking win! Win! Cry more, dude! I'd say the beer pong community at large is a great group of people. It's, there's not really, we don't have like debacles. Everyone 
knows everyone. Like we, we go to these out of town trips and we we get to hang out with all of our friends. Like we, you go wherever wherever you want across the country, and you have friends that would be more than willing to let you stay on their couch. You know, it's it's like everyone there is really cool and like down to earth and knows their stuff. But like on the table, it may seem like these players hate each other because they're constantly nagging at each other, picking at it, picking at it. And then after the game's over, everyone is willing to just shake your hand. The, Got it. the majority of the players, I'd say, are, are really cool. You know, I like to have fun. I like to, you know, a lot of people are pretty, pretty cold when you go to the out-of-state tournaments. Um, they're, you know, I, I, enjoy, I, I try to enjoy myself. I, I, I keep my composure. I don't let anyone get to me. David Glasser is my current partner for the Southwest Championship this year. He's probably uh, one of the most well-liked players in beer pong as a whole, as in, in the nation. A lot of people like him, respect him, enjoy being around him. David Glasser, <laughs> the cool kid from Albuquerque. <laughs> He's quiet on the table. He doesn't say much. He just goes and doesn't miss. It takes a lot for me to to really get going on the trash talking. Um, it's not my personal strategy. I don't like to hype myself up like that. He doesn't um, do a lot of distractions. It's not really his game. It's actually kind of funny when he gets in desperation mode when he is behind and needs to distract. His distractions are kind of lame. And it's like, really, David? That's your best distraction? I mean, I'll, I'll throw some stuff around or I'll, you know, but I, I won't, I won't like, yeah, super crazy and scream and yell and everything, you know. I keep it, I keep it reasonable. I enjoy playing with them because I can go on vacation making two or three cups a game and still win. So I like that about them. You can't miss and win. I mean, you can, but you have to, you have to be consistent. Consistency is the important part. Because anybody can go and have a great game and turn around the next game and just not make anything. But it's the consistency that makes somebody good. It's the time and time again where you're like, man, I played that guy five times now, and every single time he hasn't missed. I started playing with David um, like real seriously in June of 2012. My uh, old partner that I played in the World Series and I had had some tough runs and some satellites and David was an up and coming Albuquerque player doing real well in weekly tournaments. You know, I saw the talent there and I asked him if he'd play with me in the satellite. We went on a deep run, made it to the finals, lost in a best of three. Uh, so that was our first satellite ever together and we, we made a good showing. So after that, it was like, you know, I'm comfortable playing with this guy, let's, let's try to make some more deep runs. We're a solid team. He's incredibly confident in it, and so am I. We just know, like, we know where each other's going. We know how each other's feeling. We know who should be taking the roll back and who shouldn't be. It's just perfect at beer pong. I mean, his, his shot is, is false. I mean, any cup he needs to make, whenever he needs to make it, he does. Tonight, Southwest Beer Pong is going to be running a, a, a satellite into our championship next month. Uh, we should get about 15 to 22 teams, uh, one of our larger events uh, for our weeklies, as uh, more people come out to try to get a chance to get into the Southwest Championship for free. The prize tonight is free entry into the $2,000 tournament that we're going to be hosting a month from now. What are the favorites for tonight's tournament? Uh, David Glasser and the bum on the street is, would be a favorite, so pretty much David Glasser and anybody. And then Eden Hemphill and anybody. Uh, they, <laughs> the can pick, they, the can, they can pick up some random guy walking down uh, the road right now and they probably win tonight. So. Tonight I'm not doing the greatest. Uh, doing the Southwest Championship Satellite number five. Started out pretty shaky. Both games uh, with one of my partners. I uh, opened up like 0 for 4 both games. Got a little bit, little bit too far behind. 
and uh, couldn't come back in both games. So I'm out with one partner and the other one. Uh, we're in the losers bracket, but we've won our first two games in the losers bracket. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can make a deep run and double dip whoever makes it to the finals. That's why I'm shooting so good. She, she's, she's a good girl, man. She's gonna trade the bid that we win for a Southwest Championship shirt. Yeah. So that's all I want to win today. I'll, I'll, I'll have a shirt. I'd rather have a shirt than a beard. You take it. Right? I'm just saying. <laughs> times in a row, it's a 10 for 10. Come from this guy, be like Pee Wee, fucking have your partner shoot 5 for 20 and win a satellite. 6 for 20. A 6 for 20, sorry. But you just put the ball in the hole. In the hole. Dude, are you scared of my beer or what? Are you really scared of my beer? I'm scared. I'll put it over there if you're scared of it. I'm so scared. Alright, shut up. Perfect game, perfect game. <laughs> Baby, back here. There we go, Marilyn. I like the idea of double dipping. When I don't have to do the double dip, I'm like, yeah. You want to be the double dipper, not the double dippy. Not the double dippy, the double dipper. It's a rough feeling. It's a rough feeling. How does it feel? Oh my god, I can make cups. Oh my god. 
you want to prop it seven days? Tyler, Tyler can make cups better than you, but can Brent, can Brent make cups better than David? This is a better question. That's the end guarantee. Let's do it, dude. They're shooting he another perfect the game. They already, I know, they already shot a perfect against us. Perfect games in finals. He'll never start missing, dude. He's David Glasser, dude. I just missed like he's 30 David, seconds ago. He's David Glasser, dude. I, I have Tyler hold of my fucking team, dude. He's from Maryland, bro. I got to do it, dude. He's too good, dude. I have to. Well, you, you can think that all you want. They're down by two. Not for long, but. No, fuck no, dude. This guy doesn't miss. David Glazer, second in the world, dude. You guys gonna answer that? The 10 for 10 yourself? Yup. Yup. shit. 10 for 10 on film. 10 for 10 for 10. Three in a row, oh my god, dude. I thought this guy didn't miss. That's six misses, folks. Six consecutive? Oh god, that's awful. Ben likes to get double dipped, though. Ben's like, if I make my first three, I know, I think every finals I've been has been against you games. I've double dipped every single time. He's already. This one's for you, Zetterson. Is it? You're gonna miss if you do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> do it for Gabe! Oh no! <laughs> I'm still tough for you. I'm really still tough for you. Give him the hole. Oh, no. do it for MD United. And he does it for MD United every day for the last five days, at least. For the last five minutes. Huge break. He's been wearing my partner's wore the same shirt for the last five days. I don't have all like. Four. Four. He smells a little bit bad over here. That's why I asked him if his washer was broken. I asked him if his washer was broken. Come on, Glasser. Your partner wants it. Uh oh. Let your partner take it. Let your partner take it. He'll make it. That was your biggest mistake right there. I was at UNM in 2009, and a friend of mine, Ben, Ben White, he saw a flyer for Southwest Beer Pong on a, uh, you know, like on a cork board around campus. And we were we were always pretty good. Like, you know, we would go out on the weekends and stuff and play, and we would we just like wouldn't lose and stuff. You know, it was fun to us. And we, he sent me a picture of the flyer. And I got it, and I was like, "Oh man, I gotta, we gotta go out here and see what we can do. It's gonna be pretty fun." And we had no idea how, you know, how many people were gonna be there and how it was gonna be played. And you know, for me, when I think back to that, I, I look at how the rules were played and how everything was introduced to me. And for me, I was like, "Okay, cool, sweet, awesome. Like, let's let's go. I'm, I'm pretty excited for this." But when you see someone else new come in and they see it, it seems like they're just like. They're just like, you know, what is this? You know, this is stupid. There isn't even beer in the cup. It's a complete, it's completely backwards. 
for me, I don't even remember there. I don't even remember thinking twice about, you know, it might have been like a two second thing for me. Oh, oh, there's no elbow. Okay. Like, all right, when do we play? Like, that's all I wanted to do was, was try to win. Elbows is generally a rule that was created when, um, I guess, like party rules came out um, that your elbow could not cross the line of the table. At the World Series of Beer Pong wanted to create a rule that didn't have controversy. Where you have someone shooting for $50,000, you didn't want someone on the other team saying, no, 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 elbow cross, elbow crossed. You have 80 tables running at the World Series of Beer Pong, given, you know, give or take. And you'd have to support 80 refs per table to watch every single elbow. Because any time a dispute's gonna come, there's no cameras that we can look at, at least not for every table. So the staffing would be ridiculously high cost, which would drive up entry fees for people, which might even equal lower turnout. So the biggest thing with the lean rule was that it eliminated controversy. It just allows everybody to lean. This way no one can complain whether or not someone's elbow crossed or not. The lean is a rule where basically your elbow can cross the edge of the table. Uh, you can lean across uh, as far as you can without bracing yourself uh, on one leg if you prefer and you shoot the ball. Some people who are six foot eight can get halfway across the table. People like me, I'm five foot five, I can reach maybe a fourth or across the table. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's all about accuracy. I really don't think that being tall is what sets a good player from a bad player because even in Southwest Beer Pong, players like David Glasser and Gabriel Montoya, they are, aren't that tall, they're the short guys, and they're still making cups. Elbows is, I think, the main reason why B-Pong and competitive rules are, are frowned upon so much, and I think that's why they have such a hard time having such a good turnout. They, they offer a $65,000 prize pool to the World Series, and they just held a $100,000 prize pool tournament, and, you know, you'd think news of that there'd be thousands of teams coming out but they immediately get intimidated by the lack of elbow rule because the, the house version of the game the party version of the game is played with elbows because the length of tables is inconsistent nothing's consistent you're just playing out of the fun of it and it's viewed as cheating if your elbow crosses the line of the table and so that's fine i have no issues with that in that version of the game i think that's completely fine but when you're putting thousands of dollars on the line you need to have a physical regulated barrier. And if somebody might be, you know, six foot five, and when you're a good player, that doesn't matter. I mean, you can look at Gabe Montoya, who's like five foot five, and you can put him up against Eden, who's like six foot seven, and they'll go to countless overtimes. It's, it's, it's a matter of skill, I think. And when you're, when you're not as good at the game, and when you're kind of intimidated by it, and you go out to an event like this, and you see that there's no elbow rules, and you're getting just destroyed by this team, you're gonna blame it on the elbows because you've never seen people play to that caliber. Everyone thinks it's a slam dunk. Uh, a new player who's used to house rules will come in, see someone leaning halfway across the table and think this is crap. You know, they're so used to the rules they play by and they see these guys making it at an extremely high percentage and they go, oh yeah, of course you can. Of course you can make it every time, you're slam dunking it. And my thing I like to tell them, well if it's so easy, come beat us. If you wanna, if you wanna, you know, stay at home and play beer pong on a recreational level, and you don't really want to get good, and it's fun. And I mean, if you want to go out and have fun, you will have a great time at the World Series. You will have a great time at any beer pong event or any beer pong rules event. But you have to understand that people take it seriously. I mean, anybody who's played beer pong has encountered somebody complaining about the elbow rules. So first and foremost, that needs to be gone if you're going to play competitive. So you need to get over that if you're going to, if, if you want to get good. Uh, beer is not allowed in the cups and bars. Uh, this is a alcohol and gaming decision for the state of New Mexico. Uh, it's considered a drinking game if beer is in the cups. Forcing someone to drink, 
or it being a reward for someone winning. You have the other team has to drink. Uh, that can be viewed as binge drinking, or you can't force people to drink. Basically, places like Nevada. They allow beer in the cups. They pretty much allow anything in Nevada. So it's a little more lenient there and they're allowed to put beer in the cups. Uh, we get a few people who are like, wow, you guys are playing beer pong with water. And it's not because we want to. If I could have beer in the cups, I would. But to, uh, to get through the regulations of the state of New Mexico, we are forced to put water and drink beer on the side if you want to. That's where it all started. If it weren't for beer and alcohol, you know, I mean, it is beer pong. For some people, uh, alcohol plays a big part, as in it helps them shoot, or they think it helps them shoot. Some people don't want to drink at all. They think they play better uh, completely sober. The alcohol, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I like to play whatever state of mind. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if I'm drunk or if I'm sober. I'm going to just play the game. I like playing it without beer in the cups because I'm I'm not as concerned with drinking, you know, as I am playing. I want to, you know, I want to play to practice um, and just drink on the side. I mean, it's not even a necessity for me. My game, alcohol, I believe helps me. When I'm two or three beers in, I feel like I'm at the top of my game. Whether it's just because I'm starting to get drunk and I don't realize I'm missing the same amount of times, I'm not sure. But every time I am drinking, I feel like I'm shooting a lot better. So I prefer to play on some type of a buzz. You know, not stumbling drunk, because then I have no idea where the ball's going. But a little buzz is perfect for me. What do you need to do to win? You, you have to, you have to be consistent. Consistency is the important part. To win a big tournament, it takes a lot of confidence in yourself and your partner, and being able to be in sync. It takes uh, consistency, um, shooting at a high percentage, being able to control your emotions during a game, control breathing, uh, having a, a memory shot, I guess you could say, or muscle memory, uh, and just knowing where you're at, where your partner's at, uh, staying focused. Team chemistry is pretty much everything that you have in beer pong, especially like, I mean, you can have, you can win a bunch of games and even tournaments, like having just one strong player and then kind of like that role player. But if that role player is not making cups and you guys aren't on the same page, then it's usually going to result in a loss. <laughs> you just have to go into it with the mentality of playing 10 cups and not two people because a lot of players that aren't that good will go up to the table and see players like David Glasser, Eden, Corey, Gabe, me, you know, and right away before the game, before I even touch a ball, they assume that they lost the game. And I could have a really bad game and miss eight in a row and lose. It happens. But a lot of people have the mentality that they're playing a good player, so they lost. I know that I'm going to beat you. I know that there's no one, no one's going to beat me two out of three times. I know I'm better than you. I know I'm going to win. I know I have a better percentage. I know I have a better opportunity to win than you do. Um, so I, I come off as cocky, but I'm, I, the difference is that I don't talk about it. Brandon Marks is a really nice guy off the table and on the table he is really competitive. I guess when it comes to raw talent and just being well known, I would say Brandon Marks is probably the best player in the Southwest. The Southwest best player, uh, you know, he can be beaten now. You have to study your opponents. 
Uh, that's what a lot of people don't do. They use the same um, techniques from, from player to player to player. Uh, I treat it kind of like a scouting report in baseball. Pay attention to who you're playing and see what forces them to miss. See what kind of things they don't like. Whether that's crowding the table, leaving space, uh, focusing on them, talking to them, talking to the partner, ignoring them, not paying attention to them. Th things like that. Uh, depth perception issues behind the table. Uh, you really have to be a student of the game in order to win. A lot of things don't get to him in the game. You know, if he's missing, it's pretty much because he's the one missing, not anything you're going to do. He's incredibly good. He's incredibly intimidating. He's incredibly confident. You know, he's a, he's a pretty big dude. He's like, you know, like six, you know, I think he's inside, probably like six, seven. Uh, incredibly basic shot. There's not much movement. And he's, he's very good. I mean, he's debatably the West Coast, you know, best player. Cocky, and he knows it, and he knows that he's good, and, and that he gets in the other person's head and makes them want to miss. That's my B Mark's persona. That's the cocky, arrogant asshole who's better than everyone else, and wants his main goal when he goes to an event is to is to make everyone wonder why they even bother coming out because there's no chance. There's absolutely no chance. That is his mentality. But at the same time, there's a fine line between cocky and confident, and I straddle the shit out of it. It's not fair to the world when I tell somebody. management. Been there for just hit my seventh year in, uh, in May. Um, I've been in retail my entire life. My aggressive personality, my drive to be successful, they go hand in hand. Um, I want to be the best where I'm at. I want to be the, I want to have the best store at all times. I want it to look the best, produce the best results. And at the same time, I want my tournaments to be the best ran, the most fun. I want my customers to come in and have the best experience. And I want to be the best. As an organizer, He's helped me personally uh, the last couple of years run my Southwest Championship by running satellites in Arizona, which without him, I probably wouldn't be able to run, run the Southwest Championship. Now it's more about kind of being an ambassador to the game and helping others grow, helping other organizations grow, areas, people, helping them with the shots, helping them just get better in general, and helping the game by running these tournaments that we do. The Southwest Championships, he has actually won back to back with different partners. One of them being awful, and one of them being good. <laughs> uh, my history with the Southwest Championships is uh, it's pretty good. Town, 2010, and he ended up winning with Shane Grove. And then he came the next year, and won with Arnold Clough. And he's gonna try to come out this time, you know, obviously, and you know, three P. But I think he'll have a little bit harder of a time. 16 and 0 in prelims, two big checks, two losses. Uh, six out of eight tournaments won, so I'm, it's always I, I've never I've never lost when I came to Southwest. Personally, really like playing against him because I like to talk shit to him. Eden, uh, you talk about New Mexico rivalries. I would probably say he is my one of my personal rivals. Uh, I've had I've never had someone tell me so many times, other than him, that they are going to beat me, that they are going to smash me. They, they can't wait to play me because they are going to beat me so bad. And I don't recall the last time he ever beat me. Like, we were shooting really good all day and, like, not really missing any cups, just bulldozing through everyone. Like, we took out Sonoma and Mark, and we got to the finals and just kind of lost it. <laughs> like, I mean, even Brandon Marks and Arnold didn't even shoot that good in the finals, but we outdid them in the shooting worst part. <laughs> <laughs> For this this Southwest Championship, I don't even want to think of it like that. I just it's want just to... making ten cups. That's all. Yeah, it ten is. cups. Ball good. into a cup, like that's. So I, I, that's ten for twelve or better every game. We're, we're salt. With uh, Eden, David, Corey, Pee Wee, Tyler, myself, I think we can compete with anybody. Uh, just 
currently Arizona has our number in every tournament they play against us. They always win. Every time they come over here, they win, even our satellites. A rivalry is something where it trades off, where New Mexico has to win a few times. So I would say just come over here and dominate. Currently, it's, uh, it's been the trend. If Albuquerque wins the Southwest Championship this year, I think it'll be a big step for us. It's a tournament we've hosted now. This will be the fourth year, and we haven't been able to win our own tournament. I would say it's a step towards you know, knocking down that, that power between Arizona and ourselves. Texas. Thank you guys making the trip. Let's get started. Good luck to everybody. Table two. I need effing cry about it against I'd rather eat glass than repeat with anyone else. I need sex wax against he's not underrated. He just sucks. Cheech and Pong against we still in this bitch. Preliminary games, we had they Google me take the one seed at 8-0. No. Uh, Brandon Marks and Arnold C took the two seed at 7-1. and one. Uh, Sex Wax consisted of Casey Landis and Doug Uteg took the three seed. Derek Chavez and Dusty Fleming of D&D Management took the four seed. So those are your top four seeds. I'd say the, the biggest shock was probably Cheech and Pongo in 4-4 four and, four and getting the 10. Everyone uh, probably had them in the top two seeds for sure going in. But uh, everything is played for today. Yesterday is pretty much just a warm up. Try to give yourself the best chance today. Anybody can win today. It doesn't matter what seed you have. As long as you're in the tournament, you can win. Well, aside from the fact of us going seven and one and me losing my first prelim game ever in this event to somebody, it just shouldn't have happened. But when you miss six cups in a game, it, anyone can beat you. But then other than that, it would be uh, Aiden and Corey going four and four. I didn't expect that. Played them in the finals last year. Um, Glazer, Glazer and Gabe going eight no. It's just that's just that was stupid. And no, no chance. It should have been roles should have been reversed on that one. Those guys suck. We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yes, it doesn't matter. It's what today yeah. doesn't matter. All about today, baby. Don't even worry about it. Don't worry about us. From Beirut to California, to the series in Las Vegas. If there's a game out here, you're calling the show. Three pointers playing. It's a hard and fast excuse to get us good and drunk. Actually, fucking life is game. It's like this game. We're not the 
years and 12 nights. Shooting good at all. It just fell apart. It wasn't wasn't how like we caught our rhythm. We should have we should have played more tournaments leading up to it to, to catch back the rhythm, you know. But I don't know. It, it's a disappointment. But whatever. I want. I still want to see Gabe and Glasser win this one. Take it home for Albuquerque. And oh, guaranteed, I'm gonna be right behind them in the finals because it, it, that's just how it is. It feels really good. It's a tough team to beat and. Now we're back in the finals, time to double dip. Pee Wee just beat Cheech and Pong by one cup, no overtimes. It's a huge deal because it allows uh, Pee Wee, the loser of that game, gets to play in a third place game. Or the winner of that game, I apologize, get to play in a third place game where the loser of that game out of tournament. They get fifth place, nothing, tournament over. But now it's my turn to step up and make my cups and not miss anymore. So, I'm ready. Would you like to play a game? I said, yeah, what the hell? And then my life will ever change. Being a part of the world, stay kind of weird on her side. With everything to gain, nothing to lose, but I'm dry. We played it till the sun goes out, the break was broke. Arnold, welcome to 
yourself to the game. You're the one who hasn't made one. But after this shot, you have. Bro, oh, no. What happened here? The shirt, bro. And why am I not wearing one? Why am I not wearing one of those shirts, Brandon? Give me, give me that watch. Brandon, give me that watch, yo. One time, I want that watch. I want that watch one time, bro. Where'd you get that watch? Where'd you get that watch? No, I wouldn't shoot. I need it, Harvey. Oh. Is this like Dateline? You know, 60 minutes, 60 for 60? Fucking missed it. <laughs> Second and Nasser missed it. Brandon, that shit's X-rated. That shit's X-rated, bro. You better get that out of here. We paid for no misses. Say that before you shoot. Tell me to shut the fuck up before you shoot. Oh, you suck. How hard you got? Have you missed that, bro? Come on, bro. Let's go, bro. Mexico's great at coming back from everything, except for beer pong games. I don't want to touch that fucking jacket. The guy with the biggest boobs. Hey, you're the shirt back. Shut the fuck up, you muddle. Alright, dude. I'm gonna go to the back, but you're both short. Hey, Arnold. At least we can lose weight. You're both those ugly mugs the rest of your fucking life. That's true. Still a pussy. Yeah. Still a pussy. Let's go, Gabe, right now. Check Facebook. Don't miss last cup like I missed it for you. Don't let your partner down like I apparently let you down. Ooh. Where, where's his Google Meet shirt? Oh, that's right. He remembered the last time he wore it. He got his ass raped in his first Saudi final. Fucking town! Shut up, Kessler! Remember that part? 
parking lot, I took a picture of my big fucking chest. What about the fun? Parking lot for fun. You bums. You bums. Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. Go. Shut your fucking mouth. You bums. Me again. Baby, believe. Yeah. 
fucking bum. Bum! What? Congratulations to our first place team for yet again winning the Southwest Beer Pong Championship. Congratulations, Brandon. Thank you. My only objective is to win. Aside from my gameplay uh, and some other things, I'm just irritated that I lost two games. Now I have more losses than checks, and that's kind of aggravating. Every single time I've came to New Mexico ever, all they do is talk shit. And, and I love that. As a group, as a whole, they're great supporters of their locals, and they talk just so talk much shit. Just talking shit right now. <laughs> I love it. I love shutting people up. The make, I, yeah, just, I, uh, everyone's yelling at you. And, and when you bang it, it, and then everyone's just quiet. like... Quiet. No, giving someone no... It's like, shoving a, it's like shoving a sock in their fucking mouth. Nothing's better than shutting somebody up when they have no reason to talk. It sucks because we had it, but we didn't at the same time. Because we just blew it, pretty much. We had balls. It was 6-6. Six six. I think we had balls. It was balls, 6-6, six six, game two. We go, we six ball there. Miss on the two rack. They got a rebuttal, they got a rebuttal three. Pretty much biggest swing of the game. We had six, we, we missed five. They three ball us, get the three. Now we're now we're behind the curve. Uh, they took care of business, you know. Took care of business. Winning game one was huge for us. We had a rebuttal two. Then we had a rebuttal one. And then we finally won in double overtime. Big win for us, gave us the advantage. We gotta win, basically now we're, we gotta get double dipped at that point. And we did. We started out strong game three, missed four or five times at, at seven rack. That really put us behind three, four cups. Um, we, we clawed back to get to a reasonable amount of cups to rebuttal. In the end, we had to rebuttal four in game three for the championship. You know, no good team expects to have to rebuttal four. It's pretty much a two or one game at that point. Should have been. Uh, we missed so many times at seven rack, totally killed us in game three. I feel like. Game two took the win out of our sails. You know, we, we played with every ounce of heart in game one. Somehow came away with it. Game two, I really felt like it was ours to win. We didn't take care of business. Nope. They, you know, they won game two. Game three, we just missed too many times at seven. Easy as that, it's a good team. You know, you're playing a good team. You give them three, four misses. And it's over pretty much. You're, you you deserve never, to lose. You deserve to lose unless you can just rebuttal a, a ridiculous amount of cups. We should never miss that. We should never miss that kind of, that kind of rack. You never worry about the moment, because when you worry about the moment, you collapse. Every game means the same thing. You always want to win. You never worry about what the other team has done or what the other team is currently doing. You only worry about yourself. 
You take every single game as a singles competition. You against yourself. Simple. We learned that we just can't miss as much as we thought we could. That's for sure. That's hands down, man. You play a team, you play a team that shoots 70% plus, you give them four or five misses a game. It's over, it's on You're gonna lose. And, and even if you don't lose, you're gonna have to rebuttal several cups. You just can't, you can't give them such an advantage. I feel like we're not gonna lose, obviously. I mean, but you still keep your cool, you know, you keep your cool as if, you know, it's, it's like next game type of mentality. It's never automatically yours. You know, you still have to play like, you know, you have another 20 games to win, but, um, and we, 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 we played that way, but they just didn't miss. We missed. That's that's the difference. We just missed. They didn't. You know, they deserved it. They, they weathered the storm. They took the game. They took the loss in game one. They knew they were back so against the walls. They had to win two in a row. And they did. I'm excited for They Google Me's future. World Series 9 is definitely on the horizon. Anything can happen. You know, we, we took. We took every advantage we had of prelims and bracket. We made it to the finals. We were up one to zero in the finals and had to get double dip. Basically, you know, I mean, if there's any story you can happen, that's the worst. Yeah, those are the only games we lost the whole tournament. We're in the finals. Those two. So we opened up the tournament nine and 10 and something like that. Lost the last two, but that's all it takes. Yep. We just gotta learn from our mistakes and just don't miss. And the end of the story, it. three misses means the whole thing. You shoot 10 for 10 the whole way up and then and then miss three times, four times, and the whole thing is over. Yeah. We try to defend Albuquerque as best as we could. Brandon's a stud. He's won this tournament three times in a row. Twice with Arnold, once with Shane Grove. You know, the man, the we man. Allowed it. We allowed it. Man. We allowed Until it. he's beaten, he's the best. That's what I do. I'm up 100. So when I win 1,200 tomorrow, on Sunday, I actually won 13. All right. You just can't compete. Look good, feel good, play good. That's the motto, man. Terrible. One hundred percent. Everything you hear, bullshit. <laughs> we'll take it home for the hometown, baby. Let's go.